A few decades ago, you were a complete lunatic if you thought there were pre-Clovis sites in the Americas. But that thinking process has changed in the last decade. In 1992, construction workers were digging up a freeway in San Diego, California when they came across a trove of ancient bones. Among them were the remains of dire wolves, camels, horses and giant gophers, but the most intriguing were those belonging to an adult male mastodon. When archaeologists completed an extensive analysis of the mastodon fossils, they were shocked by what they discovered. The findings went against nearly everything that we have been taught about early human history in North America. Shock and disbelief initially set in because the conclusions would be so controversial. After years of testing, an interdisciplinary team of researchers announced that these mastodon bones date back to 130,000 years ago. The researchers then went on to make an even more stunning assertion. These bones, they claim, also bear the marks of human activity. The US Geological Survey conducted rigorous uranium series dating of the mastodon fossils and yielded an estimated burial age of approximately 130,000 to 130,700 years ago. Before you comment that this is some crazy fringe theory, please check my sources in the description. Indeed, the findings could upend our current understanding of when humans arrived in North America, already a flashpoint among archaeologists. The study suggests that some type of hominin species was bashing mastodon bones in North America about 115,000 years earlier than the commonly accepted date. That's a staggeringly early date, and one that is likely to raise eyebrows. There is no other archaeological evidence attesting to such an early human presence in North America. The scenario begs the question, what species of human was in Southern California around 130,000 years ago? Possible candidates include Homo erectus, Neanderthals, the Denisova, and early modern humans. In fact, there is evidence of humans in Australia from 120,000 years ago, and evidence that humans had made it to remote islands in the Philippines and Indonesia as much as 800,000 years ago, where they were butchering pygmy rhinoceros and elephants. So why could these same humans not have made it to the Americas, and then been absorbed into later migrations, or died out? DNA evidence from Papua New Guinea has pretty much proven that so-called archaic humans were already there when modern Homo sapiens arrived. Anatomically modern humans have not been found at this date in northeastern Asia, but it is not totally impossible that they were around, and even made it to North America. Especially if the earliest dates for modern humans, around 100,000 years ago in China, proved to be right. It seems unlikely, but again, not impossible, that some human species other than cognitively modern humans could make the journey by boat. Neanderthals, Denisova, or some mix of these populations were in southern Siberia, and feasibly in northeastern Siberia, at this time. They could have made the journey by land to North America at the right window of opportunity. Such as after temperatures had risen, ice had melted and the sea levels had not yet drowned the Bering Land Bridge. Don't tell anyone, but the fact is that around 130,000 years ago, during a warm spell, the climate was hotter and sea levels were up to 30 feet higher even than today. This would have been the perfect opportunity for humans to move into the Americas. Regarding the possibility that early humans arrived in the Americas via watercraft, there is ample evidence for early human travels over water. Mariners are thought to have arrived on the island of Crete 130,000 years ago, and human activity on the island of Sulawesi, Indonesia is believed to have occurred 118,000 years ago. It is therefore possible that early humans crossed larger bodies of water, like the Bering Strait, especially during these warm spells. Humans are a tropical primate after all. Who were the first Americans, and when and how did they get here? For decades archaeologists thought they knew the answers to these questions. Based on the available evidence, it seemed big game hunters from Asia, known as the Clovis people, were the first to blaze that trail. They trekked across the now-submerged landmass of Beringia to enter the New World around 13,000 years ago. But starting signs of an earlier human presence in the Americas started to crop up, eroding support for the so-called Clovis First model. A new understanding of how people finally conquered the new world began to take shape. Homo sapiens arrived by boat at least 15,000 years ago, following the western coast of the Americas. 
but the scientists behind the Mastodon discovery are looking to rewrite the story of human colonization of the Americas once again, in a far more radical fashion. The researchers describe the broken bones of a Mastodon and battered rocks from a site in Southern California. They argue the remains demonstrate humans were in the Americas 130,000 years ago. If they are correct, the find could call into question the long-held assumption that Homo sapiens was the first, and only member of the human family, to reach the new world, because the find hails from a time when multiple human species, including the Neanderthals, roamed the planet. It could also suggest archaeologists have missed a more than 100,000-year record of humans, in this part of the world. The mastodon's limb bones bear evidence of distinctive breaks, called spiral fractures, around the long axis of the bones. Such fractures typically occur when extreme force is applied to fresh bone. The ends of some of the bones were also broken off, and several large battered stones were found nearby. When the researchers experimentally broke bones from the carcasses of large modern-day mammals, using hammer stones and anvils, the resulting damage resembled the damage seen from the site. Together, the pattern of damage evident on the bones suggests humans were pounding the bones with the rocks to get to the nutritious marrow inside, or to make tools from the bones. None of that would be remarkable in and of itself. Such behaviors have been well documented at archaeological sites around the world. What makes the discovery a big deal is the age of the remains. The team determined the age of the mastodon bones by applying a technique called uranium series dating, which uses the radioactive decay of uranium to measure the passage of time. The results indicated the bones are 130,000 years old, give or take a few years. This is more than 100,000 years older than the oldest commonly accepted archaeological sites in the Americas. Remarkably, 130,000 years ago, during the last interglacial period, the Mastodon site was a warm meandering stream in a floodplain near the coastline. Camels, dire wolves and giant guinea pigs roamed the area. Researchers will need to rethink everything they thought they knew about the peopling of the New World, including which human species was the first to colonize the continent. Most researchers still agree humans came to the Americas from northeastern Asia. Indeed, 130,000 years ago, early Homo sapiens, Homo longi, the Neanderthals and all the Denisova might have been present in that part of the world. They could have crossed Beringia on foot, when sea levels were sufficiently low. Otherwise, they could have traveled by boat, following the coasts of Asia, Beringia and North America to reach Southern California. However, the possibility that archaic humans might have made it to the New World is a stumbling point for some critics. There's some evidence that Homo erectus was able to cross bodies of water in Southeast Asia. But no evidence that Homo erectus, or Neanderthals, could do long-range voyaging or that they had sophisticated boats, like modern humans had when they colonized Australia. There is a long history of people making claims for extraordinarily early sites in the Americas. Including the site of Calico Hills in California, which the famous Kenyan paleoanthropologist, Louis Leakey, argued was perhaps 200,000 years old. But these claims have long been debunked. Therefore, occupants of the Mastodon site could have been Neanderthals, their Denisova cousins, anatomically modern humans, or they might have been some type of hybrid population. Recent genetic studies indicate that rather than dealing with a single, isolated species of migrating hominids or humans, we're actually dealing with an intermixing metapopulation. This opens the can of worms called the multiregional hypothesis. And finally, the evidence is starting to tip the scales away from a sapiens first model of global exploration. Thanks for watching the video, if you found the content educational and entertaining, please subscribe to the channel, bash the like button to pieces, and share the video with other humans. And if you have any thought-provoking ideas, or you are an independent fact-checker, please leave a comment. Have you ever seen this come up on your social media? False information, reviewed by independent fact-checkers. Well that's us, we're the fact-checkers.